Welcome to the Bible Truth of Our Hymns. We're going to look at a hymn from a hymnal and check it to see if that hymn is biblically sound or not. There are stanzas in the hymns or words that are not correct from the Bible. We need to see that in a church where there are three types of people. Number one, they're saved and serving and loving the Lord. Number two, they're saved and they're worldly. And number three, lastly, they're lost men. Jesus said, every idle word shall man give an account. Are we proposing men and women in the church to sin by the hymns that are chosen? We will examine some, but not all, in this study. We will set a groundwork that the sin, that the sin, the hymn that we missed, you can be able to check for yourself and study yourself to see is this hymn that I like correct now not all the hymns that we're going to look at will be wrong many will be great and wonderful hymns and a few will have to be is it really proper will it glorify God or will it cause a man to sin The, the Biblical Truth of Our Hymns. Today we're going to use the fair use copyright law of ability to teach and for you to learn and to take our resources that we have of copyrighted material that we can may know if it is correct for a Christian to sing. And the fair use for this of a copyrighted work is We've got to look at the person. We've got to look at the hymn. And we've got to examine the, the context of this one. And to apply it to our churches. Because this hymn, the Battle Hymn of the Republic. By Julia Ward Holt. How long? And I'm using the copyrighted work, Dr. Paul E. Heaton, Ph.D., Excellent book. I get this book. I read this book. I mean, for you. King's Publishing Company, copyright 1991. 3297 Euclid, E U C L I D Avenue, Lumpton, Missouri. Am I? And this is a remarkable book that, that's helped me on this one. And what we need to look at first, as far as the writer of this hymn, as we've done with other hymns, is who is the writer? And the first thing we th see that she's an Episcopal church. Um, she's a woman that involved herself early in her life with balls for dancing, music, theater. And... The people she surrounded herself with, the lifestyle that she had, the people that surrounded her life were uh, about uh, uh, social reform, anti-slavery movement. Now, I am not for slavery, but slavery is a Bible doctrine. It is in the Bible, and it is happening today. It has not been ended. But the fact is that we have a book in the Bible called Philemon about a runaway slave. We see the story of Hagar, a runaway slave that the angel of the Lord told her to go back to her mistress. That Paul sent Onesimus back to his owner. And when we break away from the anti-slavery movements and all that, we are really breaking the law. We don't put our trust in God, in faith, in prayer, in practice. Humanism. Social reform again. Reformer. Are people that follow this woman's life. We have uh, Emerson. 
who at one time was a Unitarian minister. And you must look at the Unitarians and you must look at the Episcopals to find out the source. And I said, this book is excellent. You find Quaker minister in her life. You find Anglican church, a Catholic church, Ang Anglican, I'm sorry, I mispronounced it. But you have not seen, I have not read of a Bible believing, and then I'll throw Baptist church in there. And you got to think about the people in her life as a young woman that influenced her life to grow up and to have this hymn that is sung in churches. She was involved in the woman's right movement. And yet the Bible says evil communications corrupt good manners. 1 Corinthians 15.33 And we got to look a lot into her before we get into her hymn. Unitarian Church in Boston. She left one Unitarian church to go to another Unitarian church. And then that Unitarian, you can trace that back. Uh, now the Unitarian, Unitarian church. Let's look at what things Miss Howell writes in her books. Let me here record my belief that society rarely attains anywhere a higher level than that which all must recognize in the Boston of the last 40 years, the religious philosophy of the Unitarian pulpit. So, what is the Unitarian? What is that teaching? The true existence of God. God can be anything you want to be. That there is an inspired, inerrant, infallible word, Bible, the doctrine of revelation of absolute and authority of the Bible is alien to their faith. They don't believe in the Bible as the Word of God. But we're going to run into some quotation in this hymn by a church that does not believe in the Bible. They do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah or the Jewish hope or the Savior of Christians. They don't believe that. They also do not believe in the doctrine of the virgin birth. And there is no trinity. So if anybody comes from the belief of the Unitarianism Church. As what we stand for already. You cannot be saved. See one of the things my salvation relies on. Is that Jesus Christ is virgin born. Jesus Christ is the Son of God of, of the three of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And that man to them, he's not a sinner. It is unthinkable in the church that man sins. When the Bible says all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. Listen, I could not have gotten saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day according to scriptures. It was not for the fact is with Isaiah 53. I am full of iniquity. I am a sinner. And Christ Jesus suffered and died for my sins. And then to the church, 
There is no biblical, there is no standard or position of salvation by character. I, what they believe is by works. My character, my salvation, my righteousness is in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Nothing else. Um, to them, there's no heaven or hell. Let's look what she says again. Nothing of what I have heard or read has shaken my faith in the leadership of Christ in the religion which makes each man the brother of all. We're all one people. And God the benefactor further of each and all. A religion of humanity. That's a Unitarian. Let's get everybody together. Who cares who you are? Who cares what you are? Who cares what color you are? Who cares what age you are? Who cares what sex you are? We're all together. Just minus salvation. Just minus who Jesus Christ is. Just minus the Bible. And just have a big social club. In the name of religion, of course. Uh, Read again what she's spoken about. I had been trained or think all mankind were low, vile, and wicked. Ooh. The rapture of this new freedom of the brotherhood, which made all men akin to the divine father of all. So we're all going to heaven. We're all of God. Everything's hunky-dory. There's no sin. There's no the inclusive doctrine which had made Christianity and all special forms of it the only way of spiritual redemption now appeared to me to commend itself as little reason to human affliction. So salvation is mankind. Everything, just everyone's good, everyone's right. And then they, there's no essential to God punishing anybody to hell because God would be mean if he put you in hell. So... 1850, she went to Rome to visit her sisters of, of her family. And it happened on Christmas Eve, so she went to Mass, Catholic, with a group of her friends to watch the Pope. Watch what she says. Antichrist was once a term of consummate reproach, often applied to the zealous Protestants in their arch enemy, the Pope of Rome. As will be imagined i intend a different use of it i have chosen the term to express the oppression which has sprung up within the christian church so i'm for the pope i'm for any religion i'm for everybody kind of ridiculous and what i'm reading here is coming back the fact is this is what's leading up to today's hymn she never heard a Bible preach as a final authority ever in her life, ever recorded. If she remained true to the Unitarian Church doctor, she never heard a message dealing with the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that God had actually come in the flesh. You don't hear that in the Unitarian Church. And she's never been called to an altar call as he writes here which you know I believe you got to deal with them as sinners and let them come to Christ so the question is is she a born again Christian I already know by her church that she was in if she believed the doctrine we can remove the Bible because they have not once in her entire biography, Reminiscence, which is 444 pages, she ever talk of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, as being her Savior, Guide, or Redeemer. She speaks of believing in God, and she speaks of Christ. But there is no clear, put on paper, black and white, the blood of Jesus Christ, Calvary, saved her soul. 
I hope you can go in my Facebooks. I hope you can go in my writings. I hope you can go in my videos and go into my audio. If you were to stand by and listen to me, anyway, I hope somewhere in my life at least once I have confessed to Jesus Christ by the gospel, by his blood being shed upon Calvary's cross. That is the only means I have been saved, April 1987. If I've not said that, I'll say it now. I am washed by the blood of Jesus Christ outside of anything that I ever can do and cannot ever do. My salvation rests upon Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is God, who is also 100% man. God's blood, Acts 20, 28, saved my soul. She never mentions heaven, hell, salvation, living for Jesus, etc. You can go back on all these videos I do and audios and things I write. Uh, it's all there. She never thanks God, praises God, or anything in appreciation for his sacrifice at all. 444 pages. Look what's lacking. She never quotes one verse. You know, verse, 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 verse for me. And to her eyes of the glory of the Lord has nothing to do with the Bible. We can see that now. If she makes it to Unitarian, as she writes, as a thing she saw, has nothing to do with the Bible, but has to do to the Union Army victory. We are moving from the Bible to a state in America between North and South, between the free and the slaves. And did you know with Bible doctrine that a woman is not to assert the authority over a man that Mrs. Hall preached in the church where she was a member of the like faith and she was a welcome guest speaker in the Boston Radical Club? She would stand in a church at a pulpit and preach. And then she's never read her Bible. And then the beauty of the lilies, they had nothing to do where Christ was born. Have you ever found lilies in a stable? His day in the scriptures points to a second advent. And when we go through this hymn that she does, it's second advent. But to her, you're referencing the Union Army. As Jesus Christ. I like this statement here. I'm going to quote him on this. Had I found this when I first started doing these. This study of the biblical truth of our hymns. I, I, would, I would quote this every time. But I'm going to quote. Dr. Paul Heaton. PhD. And forgive me if I said your last name wrong. There is no question that many of the songs in our church hymnals are a questionable purpose. If one does any amount of study into the writing of the songs that we sing, that's what we're doing now. He is suddenly made aware that the words he is often singing may not have been written in the same spirit in which he is singing them. Dr. Heaton, you, maybe I'm answering what, what you're doing here, but that is so true. And he mentions a whole bunch of things, but let's look at something here. Faith of Our Fathers, Frederick W. Faber, was written to honor the church fathers. Call no man your. You see, Faber was a Roman Catholic. We'll probably get to that hymn, Lord willing. Uh, it came upon a midnight clear. Edmund H. Sears, a Unitarian. Ooh, here we are. Remember what the Unitarians believe? It came upon a midnight clear. Do you think that? I heard the bells on Christmas Day was composed by Henry W. Longfellow. A Unitarian. And then near 
Nearer my God to thee, Miss Sarah F. Adams was a Unitarian. We've got to look to the source and the foundation. It's not Jesus Christ our foundation, and yet we've got we are doing we are following things that go against Jesus. Fanny J. Crosby, near, who wrote 8,000 poems and songs to the Lord, declared near the end of her life, My love for the Holy Bible and its sacred truth is stronger and more precious to me at 90 than at 19. Now, what a remarkable, if you ever, you can't find anything wrong with her hymns. Maybe have some kings in there every once in a while, but. Phoebe Knapp, whose testimony is stated in every line of blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine is a personal hymn of someone who is saved and just glorifying God. So, Her hymn has been included in many hymnals. And, and he writes, while she was familiar with her Bible, he, she was not familiar enough in her Bible. For Isaiah says, the truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot answer. The truth is not marching on. We'll look at some of the things here. So, now we're going to move to the Battle Hymn of the Republic. And I did these notes in ink, so you're going to have to forgive me a little bit because I write sloppy. But the Battle Hymn of the Republic. It's copyrighted. Fair use that I'm going to do this as a study for you to say, can I read this or should I not read this? Is it about God or is it about freedom of slaves in the South? In America. Where you can find America once in the Bible. And yet the Bible speaks about a bunch of slaves that were removed out of the land by the glory of God, by the, hand, by the high hand of God, led them out into the promised land. Those people were Jews. Where they were kept in slave is in Egypt. You know where Egypt is? Read your maps. So, my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. My eyes, written by Miss Howell. You mean to tell me, Miss Howell, your eyeballs saw the coming of Jesus Christ? Maybe it wasn't Jesus Christ. Maybe it was that un-Jesus, that ungodly, that un-salvation, that un-virgin birth that her church does not believe in. And if that's the case of a Unitarian right in this poem, then it's possibly that that Lord is not Lord Jesus. Could have been Abraham Lincoln. He set it straight. He set them free. I want to check the date, see if maybe she saw the coming of Abraham Lincoln rather than, oh, the second advent of Jesus Christ has not happened yet. The Messiah, Jesus Christ, the second advent, the coming of the Lord has not yet happened, but it will. After a time period called of Jacob's trouble. Jacob of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, who was renamed later on Israel, the 12 tribes. He's trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. So, let's go back to, let's go back to the coming of the Lord. 1862. 1862. Let me go back here and check real quick. 1862, yeah. 
is when this poem. So are you telling me that Miss Howell says that Jesus Christ came before 1862? So thus, the seven-year tribulation period would have ended 1862, would have, ended, it would have began in 1855, according to, I have seen with my eyes the coming of the Lord. And I've heard this hymn sung in Baptist churches. A hundred years after the second coming of the Lord. According to this hymn, even more than that. I've heard this in churches in the late 1900s into the 2000s. Jesus Christ has not come yet. He hasn't even raptured his church. This woman has jumped over the rapture, jumped over the tribulation period, jumped over the 666 and the great tribulation period, and she's gone right into the fact is, here comes Jesus, because the slaves in America are going to be set free. She's right up there with the Jehovah Witnesses, who has proclaimed three, four times, that Jesus is supposed to come back this date, Jesus Christ is supposed to come back this date, 1914, Jesus Christ is supposed to come back, and he never did. Well, no reason, Jehovah Witnesses, he didn't come back when you gave us a date because he came back at the end of the wars to free the, the, the slaves, according to this hymn. He's already come back, according to the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Which, as far as the ability that Jesus Christ has come and hasn't, it's a hymn. That's a lie. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. No, he has not come. In 2018, things are around this world are a lot worse. Sin is getting more rampant. Satan is setting up, getting ready to go. And the church is getting ready to be raptured up. We are in a state of, of mass sin. And it will only get worse before Jesus does mount up on the horse and come back. Wow, I'm telling you, it is remarkable on what Christians have fallen into decay just because I like it. You know what I mean? I like it is one of Satan's tools in his toolbox. Works very well. I like it. So going back, tram trampling the vintage grapes of wrath. The second advent, may I go to Revelation 19, and I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. I don't know any Union soldiers that were called that. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. The war hadn't started yet. When Jesus Christ comes, he will start a war. Not in the middle of one. Not end it. Because at the end of the thousand years, when, when the millennium's up, Satan comes out and he gathers men for war. Somebody had not studied their Bible. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. Soldiers in America did not wear crowns. They wore hats. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. You can check out all the, all the books about this war. And you can find out all the names. But this name no one knew. And he was clothed with a vesture dripped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the Unitarians don't believe in that. They don't believe the Bible. They don't believe in Jesus. As so is the records put forth. Now verse 13. That is Jesus Christ. John chapter 1. 1 John 5. No soldiers. No leadership of those, horse, of those soldiers. Of this war. Was ever called the word of God. But Jesus. 
and the armies which were in heaven. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. So you're trying to say that your soldiers were of heaven. For the Bible says the armies that were in heaven. The armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. On a battlefield? In America? They were filthy. They got dirty. Even when they washed in the rivers, their clothes were still clean, uh, dirty. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, not the north, not the south, not the north and the south, not the south and the north, nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Uh, so according to my eyes have seen the coming of the Lord, then Jesus Christ should be seated on the throne right now, ruling the nations with a rod of iron. It's not happening. And he that treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the Almighty God. Oh, we got it. we got the Bible there. Partial. And he had a vesture on his thigh, a name written. King of kings and Lord of lords. We don't have kings in America. We got presidents. That's the second advent. That is Jesus Christ coming back in his glory. To rid of sin and a rebellion against God and his people called Israel. You see, when we're going to talk about the second advent and the coming of Jesus Christ, we're going to talk about two things. In honor of God the Father and his people called Israel. Did you read in Genesis and Exodus that the abomination of the Egyptians were shepherds, God's people, Jews, Hebrews? They were an abomination to the Egyptians. So let's go on. Where were we? Terrible sword, swift sword. According to the Bible, which the Unitarians do not believe is an area as, as, you know, there's only one Bible. I believe that. King James. They don't. That sword to me and the Bible believer is the word of God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away, Jesus. And we read from her books, or we tried to read from her books. She has no personal testimony of the Bible in her life. So that sword has to be a sword. A physical sword. Of metal to kill to set people free during a war. It cannot be Jesus Christ because, first of all, again, he has not come back. And second of all, that word comes out of his mouth, the same word that God creates it let there be, let there be, let there be, and there is. And when Jesus comes back, that mouth is going to speak to those who don't and have not ever believed. So, let's move on. His truth is marching on. Miss Hole, you have never been in a public ministry. I'd like you to come down to Daytona Beach and City Island at the Farmer's Market Saturday morning. As I preach for 45 minutes the gospel of Jesus Christ, heaven and hell, salvation. And you'll see many 
that do not see the truth march and I and don't want to have the truth, or rather I'd be gone. A few do like it and love the word of God being preached. But most of them, many of them, there, the truth is not marching on it. We should shut up and we should get out of here. We're going to get a CD, CD player. We're going to get a, a DJ. We're going to get a bongo man. We're going to do whatever we can. We're going to call the police to get the truth that's marching on out of here. Even the good churches are falling by the wayside and dropping the word of God. As far as we can tell from her book, we don't ever see a acknowledgement of her quoting or reading the scriptures. The Bible says that Paul writes that the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Oh, and we're getting there and there and there and there right now. The truth is marching on with sodomites running around getting married in America. Let's talk about America where, where this is taking place, the great war of the states. Where the Bible says as far as sodomy, it's an abomination. If the truth was marching on, you would not allow them to do that. No, the truth is not in the schools. The truth right now is getting kicked out of the prisons. We used to be able to say, we don't give them a Bible in the school, but we'll give them a free Bible in the prisons. That's going bye-bye right now. You can't allow the Word of God and Ten Commandments in the courtroom or a courthouse. There are places where... Street preachers have been arrested in America for preaching the truth. There have been places where they try to get them to get a permit to preach the truth. You know, a soldier of the American forces, Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, Coast Guard, National Guard. I hope I haven't forgotten one because I, I give those guys great honor for the service they do. Thank you very much. But you know any of our servicemen who are go over to a Middle East country or a country that worships Allah cannot bring any holy Bible? They're confiscated. I've heard them right out of the troops' mouth. And she has a nerve to say the truth is marching on. You think the truth is going to march on when Antichrist has come? I trow not. So let's move on. I have seen him. There's the eyes of, of Howell again. Seen who? Him? Who's him? According to her is the Lord. She is proclaiming in this hymn that she has seen Jesus Christ. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord, capital L. I have seen him. Or then again, maybe it's been taken as a Christian hymn. It was never written to be a Christian hymn. In fact, this it may be, it may be in praise of the soldiers that set people free and not Jesus Christ. And in that case, in the time that she lived, she would have seen those soldiers. She would have seen those leaders. She would see the events that come and she had never seen Jesus Christ. Is there a possibility as the fellowship of the Unitarian doctrine that she grew up in that this hymn would have never and should have never appeared in a Baptist hymnal or born again Bible believing Christians lips? You know how I am, and not just because of the copyright, I am not going to quote this entire hymn. I would have to get down on my knees and repent to Jesus Christ by the blood of Jesus Christ if I were to read this whole hymn. I have been in churches where this hymn was sung and I sat there with my mouth closed. And looking around saying, what blasphemy? And there are other hymns that are sung. I will sit there, I will not sing them. And when it says, when the angels sang, I say when the angels sang. I mean, when the angels said. Every time, every time a hymn says that the angels sing, I say, said. They're not singing. I don't sing when King Jesus or King, I don't sing the king. He's not my king. 
He'll be the king of the king and the Lord of lords in the millennium, the king over the Jews, but he's not my king. And this whole study of the biblical truth of our hymns is because there are hymns I've sung, and I looked at that word and I was like, whoa, wait a minute. That's a lie. That's anti-scriptural. And that's why I'm doing these studies. In my opinion, this hymn that we're doing right now does not belong in the, in the hymnal. Now, you can put it in the Unitarians. They can have it in theirs. You can put it in a, uh, uh, we call it a Civil War uh, book to sing then, and you can have the slave. Go ahead. But as a Christ honoring saved by the wash of, this, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, by the blood of God, I don't think you have any business singing this. That's my opinion. Do what you want. I'm not going to force you. The watch fires. The camps. That's civil war. That's the American civil war. That's not the seven year tribulation. That's not the second advent in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did not come and end the civil war. And then went off into the millennium. And then. It's kind of ridiculous. She wrote this. Oh, let me look at the date again. Okay, 1862. All right, if she's seen the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ a million years after that, the millennium, um, 1,000,862 1, would be the end of the millennium, and Satan would be coming to get loose. We'd be in the millennium right now if this was my eyes of seeing Jesus. So it can't be Jesus. All right, so they had built an altar. I'm, not, I'm going to go off my notes here. I know what you want. They had built an altar. Now, the American soldier's altar, maybe, maybe some soldiers did build altars to God. Maybe there were some soldiers, both, both northern and southern, I don't mean together. Maybe, yeah, maybe they did get together. I don't know. I wasn't, maybe there was times when there was no war and there was a little peace and it was a Sunday. Maybe they did get together, had a little prayer time, had a little Bible reading. They, amen. And there have probably been many. There were many ministers and preachers in the wars. But what is the focus? What is the subject of this hymn? Is it about altars to God? No, it's not. You daring God, maybe, to all the men that fall. Oh, to men, yeah. Let's raise an altar to those men that are doing us good. I wouldn't raise an altar to Peter, James, and John, and anybody who, who preaches the gospel and tries to get right. And if her eyes have seen the coming of the Lord, and that the fact these camps, they're building altars, they're doing it in the tribulation period, which is called the time of Jacob's trouble, and it's not. <laughs> Jacob's trouble, the time of tribulation period, that rapture has not happened yet, as far as January 17, 2018. So this hymn has to go in the period that is written, about a nation at war, north and south, brother against brother, for the, the outcome, as far as one group of people, they were released to freedom by Abraham Lincoln. And here it says, I, 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 I. He got an eye problem. That's Mrs. Hall. Righteous sentence. Again, that's going to be Jesus Christ seated at the at the at the judgment, where he, he will have a, a a nation and a nation, and he'll pass sentence upon the sheep nations. You helped me. You took care of me. You fed me. You bandaged my wounds. You visited me. And then on the other side, there'll be the goat nations. You didn't do nothing for me. You had no particular interest in me. You wanted the worst for me. And they both say, well, when did we do this to you? When did we not do this to you? And the subject of the people of subject is when you helped or you did not help the brethren of Jesus, the Jews, 
First John, uh, John 1. When Jesus Christ comes back, the sentence of the judge will be, what did you do to that Jew in the tribulation? I will curse them that curse you, and I will bless them that bless you. His day, that second advent, You cannot have a hymn about the second advent and write to him that you saw it. There are no dreams and visions. We have a complete Bible. The steel. Well, that's weapons. The fiery gospel. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is a fiery gospel. You sort of got John's message when he came about the baptism of fire and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You seem to put them two together. And there's many religions that do that as far as the charismatic. That we need to be baptized with fire and with the Spirit. And there's no way you can be baptized with the fire and the Spirit. Because you cannot go to hell and you cannot be saved. And you cannot be saved and go to hell. So you're wrongly divided the gospel. And that's the case there. She's following the charismatic movement even before the charismatic movement had a movement. The hero. My hero is Jesus Christ. I don't know. I don't care about this hymn no more. Crush the serpent's head. You know that comes out of Genesis 3.15. That came from Genesis 3.15, 3, and the subject is absolutely Jesus Christ. So my question again is, the very first line, my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. You're dead. You have died. And Jesus Christ has not come back yet. And with what you're writing here, you're writing about a present time war in your time, setting people who are slaves free, not setting people who are sinners free from their sins. You have set slaves free from their masters. I have been set free from Satan by my sins. I have been set free from death by the finished work of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's coming, but he hadn't come yet. I can never say I've seen the coming of the Lord. Never. She has. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Problem. He has not come yet. And this hymn, the rest of this hymn, does not picture the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world coming. This pictures the Lion of the tribe of Judah coming. And you can't see it because it hasn't happened. And you can't say she's seen the first coming of Christ because it's 1,800 years too late for her to see the coming of the first coming. And when you get what we read here, social reform, Anti-slavery movement, humanism, reformer against slavery, and you match that with that hymn, that's what it's about. Now let's look here. Let's look here. Let me here record my belief that society rarely attains anywhere a higher level than that which all must recognize in the Boston of the last 40 years, the religious philosophy of the Unitarian pulpit. That's her words, not mine. Unitarians do not believe that Jesus is... The Messiah, he's a savior. They don't believe man's a sinner. They don't believe in biblical salvation. They don't believe in heaven and hell. 
They don't believe in the doctrine that the Bible is infallible. And what do you do? What do you do? She never had a Bible preached to her, as far as we know, out of her writings. She's never had a message dealing with the fact about Jesus Christ incarnate in the flesh as God, as human. She has never once in her biography, autobiography, autobiography, which she's written, reminiscence, 444 pages, she has never referenced Jesus Christ in any shape and form as far as her Savior. So I'm going to conclude out of my own opinion that that Lord she speaks about is not my Lord. And we got to be familiar with the Bible and study our Bible to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That Paul told the Corinth church, you better beware, there's another Jesus, there's another gospel, and there's another spirit. And I do believe that's what this hymn is. There's another Jesus. Unitarianism is not the same as a Bible-believing, born-again Christian. We don't believe the same things. And they will tell you that too. In their unity. Of all of us getting together, they won't believe. I've dealt with a Unitarian, a couple of them. And I shut their doctrine about, oh, wait a minute, you're, you're fighting me, you're arguing with me right now, but aren't we supposed to be all getting in unity together? <laughs> I love sarcasm. But they won't, they can't. So in my opinion, when it comes to the battle of him, the republic, uh, 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 nope, not for me, not for my family. Thank you.